Program, is being recorded. Yeah, so we will uh, see that, and every time you are doing an Excel, see a difference in Windows and Mac, just let me know, and I will help you to figure it out. Okay, great. Good. One. My name is Dr. Al, and welcome to our first optional important lecture in Math 534. So feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions during the session. So yeah, please feel free to ask anything that uh, you like. I will start today by uh, going to the homework. So I will go to our uh, course show. To work. But before that, um, I would like to download the Excel sheet. You know, the Excel sheet is available under course resources. So here right now we are in the main page under modules. So first, I would like to download the Excel sheet. Resources. We'll see Excel calculators or Excel sheets for six weeks through week six. And today we will start with week one. So I'm going to download this one. You see now it's being downloaded here. To save it to the desktop. So what I want to do right now, enable editing so that I can work with the sheet. Then I'm going to go save it. And same thing with you, you can also save it. And have this sheet. Okay. Now the green means these are the areas where you can enter the numbers. And the yellows, the yellow spaces mean the answer. So green where you can enter your number and the yellow means the answer. Go to my homework. It in a new window. My, my, I was planning to leave questions one and two for you. And I was thinking to start with the question three. But what do you think from our participants online right now? Would you like me to go over one and two? What do you prefer? One and two are pretty self-explanatory. You just have to look up the definitions and make sure they match uh, the question. So I think we're okay on those. Great. Yes, I agree with you. That's why I was thinking to go over uh, party three. Yes, I think that's a good plan. Great, thank you very much. So, in question three, you will see some numbers, 57, 23, etc. And then they will ask how many numbers are between 16 to less than 23. You see that? So, you will include 16, but you will not include 23. So, what we'll start doing here, we'll count. I'm going to count how many numbers between 16 and 23. I'm looking in the first row. We have 18 and 21. 23, I will not count it right now. We have 18 and 21, that's 2. And then here we have 21, that's 3. And here we don't have anything. We have, and here we have the 19, that's 4. And here we have the 18, that's 5. 
And then here we have the 20. That's six. This way I will enter six here. This is called the frequency. This means how many numbers we have in this range. Also, we can call it how many times a number is repeated. Well, question about this question. No questions on this, Professor. So now we did the 16 to, 20, to, to under 23. Should we do that again uh, one more or that's it? I think that's pretty uh, easy to go through. Just count them up and put them in the designated frequencies. Excellent, great. Yes, so we will move. Many of the questions today are short. For example, this one. A small proportion or a subset of the population in which data is collected for conducting statistical analysis is called. Now, here we need to remember that a population means all the numbers that we have. So is a subset of the population. For example, if we are talking about the DeVry students, the DeVry student population will be the students from all the DeVry campuses in the US or everywhere in the world. It will be all the students. So the sample will be part of this population. So now this part here, a subset means a sample. have an example I want to investigate the relationship between the voters income level and their voting tendencies in the United States I took a random sample from each state and asked them about their tendency of voting what is the population in this problem so as we described in the previous example in this case the population will be all the voters in the United States everybody in the United States. So this will be the answer. All the voters in the United States. The voters in Illinois did a sample of all the voters in the United States. about number five no questions again I see more students joining welcome everybody we are discussing question five voters want to investigate the relationship between the voters income level oh, we did this uh, we just did this so now we're going to go to number six. We often wish to measure consumer satisfaction. For certain products, I might ask consumers to specify their feelings as either very satisfied, somewhat dissatisfied, somewhat satisfied, or very satisfied. What level of data is this? So the Four levels of data are ordinal, nominal, interval, ratio. Exponential means that it will follow an exponential path, and this will not be discussed in this course. So these are the four levels of data. Question. So now here, I want you to understand the difference between these four. Now, nominal have data, but you cannot arrange them in order, and they will be qualitative. For example, colors, blue, yellow, 
In this case, you can't arrange them from smallest to the largest. So this is an example about nominal. The other example, a shared size. Let us say we have small, medium, large, x large. In this case, we have qualitative data, but you can arrange them from the small to x large. So this is an example about ordinal. This is what we have here. So you can arrange them based on the satisf uh, satisfaction level. Very dissatisfied, somewhat satisfied, dissatisfied, somewhat satisfied, and very satisfied. So this is an example about the ordinal. And also we have interval and we have ratio. And the difference between the interval and the ratio can be illustrated by the zero. For example, if you are talking about temperature, temperature of zero Fahrenheit doesn't mean a real zero. Interval. When the real zero data doesn't represent a real zero, this is called interval at the temperature. But if the zero represents a zero, that's called a ratio. For example, number of apples in a bag. You can have one apple, two apples, three apples, or zero. In this case, the zero means no apples. And that's an example about ratio. So here, the answer will be ordinal. Any questions about number six? So now we can move to the next one. Small data, 2.3, 7.1, 6.3, What is the range of the data? Range defined by the maximum minus the minimum. In other words, the largest number minus the smallest number. So here, when you look at the numbers, you can tell that 7.1, this is the largest number, 7.1. And the smallest number is 2.3. Again, largest 7.1, smallest 2.3. So the answer will be 7.1 minus 2.3. So you can use the sheet. Let me do the math now. Two point one minus point three. And that gave me four point eight as the range. This is one way to solve the question. Now, the other way, I'm going to copy the numbers and put them in the sheet. This is the question here. I would like to, to cite so that we can see it. the numbers here, 2.3, 1, 0.3, 5.8, and 4.2. The nice thing about this calculator that it will do the math for you. Once you click outside like that, you will see the answers. Remember, after you type the numbers, uh, then after you type the numbers, just click outside. Then you will see the mean, the average, the median, which is the middle number, and also the other answers that we will discuss later. So as you see now, the range is 4.8. Questions about number seven.
to interrupt me. We have a sufficient time today to solve all the questions that we have in this homework. We have time for discussion. Now I will go to number eight. Frequency distribution. Frequency. At last 30 to under 40. Now in the example before, we found the frequency. But today, we will solve for the relative frequency. Now, the idea here is that the formula for the relative frequency is the frequency that we want to find the answer for divided by the total number. See that? So we need to divide this by the total number. What I will do now, I will uh, use an Excel sheet here. frequency the frequency divided by the total and total frequencies We need to find the answer for this level to under 40, as you see, which is here. That so now for this part, the frequency is 30. So it should be I'm gonna type equal 30 divided by the total number. So now we need to add the total numbers here. How about this? Let us first add the total number of frequencies. So total frequencies. Plus 16. Plus 30. 18. Now you see here, I didn't put the equal sign. In Excel, if you don't put the equal sign, it will not do the math for you. See that here? Nothing will happen. But now what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy the numbers like that. And then I'm going to go here. I'm going to put equal sign and then the numbers. This will add all the numbers for me. 20, 16, 13, uh, 30, and 18. Okay, so we got 84. So now the relative frequency, now the answer. For this range, 30 to under 40. Will be for this range, I'm solving for. And this will be now the 30 divided by 84. Now, as you see here, because I didn't put the equal sign, you will not get the answer. So now here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the equal sign. So it's going to be equal to 30 divided by 84. And you can do the math in the calculator if you like. So the answer now is 0.4. But look, be careful when you are working with Excel. Sometimes you need to expand this so that you can get all the numbers. See that? In the beginning, it was like this. So please be careful when you are working with Excel. This is 0.4. But when you expand it, you see, we get the right answer. So when you run this, this is seven. The third number is seven. This is larger than five. The third number was five or larger. It will add one to the next number. So the answer now will be 0.36. And the 
And this is the answer for the problem. Any questions about uh, this part? Welcome everybody. I see more students are joining. I'm excited to have you here. That's great. For joining, I appreciate that. Again, feel free to interrupt me. Uh, just you can unmute yourself and ask your questions. Ladies and gentlemen, now we will go over number nine. So now, simple question they are asking: What is the definition of relative frequency? As we mentioned in this definition here. Relative frequency is the frequency divided by total number of frequencies. Now, then as the individual class frequency divided by total frequency. So this is the answer for this part. The others are wrong, not multiplied, no preceding, and Correct answer. Individual class frequency divided by the total. So now we have question 10. A frequency table about degrees 40 CEOs was given. So this is like the degree and how many uh, CEO degree how many of them have laws degrees masters mba so phd and the total in this example as you see 20 of them have mba degrees two of them have phds okay what the number is 40 so now they want the relative frequency for the uh, CEOs with PhD degrees. Who can answer this question from the online students? I can answer that, Professor. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. So you take the PhD number of two and you divide it by four, and it will, I believe, end up with a five percent. And thank you, thank you. You 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 mean to divide by forty? Yeah. Yes, by sir. Yes, sir. That. That's what I meant. This is wonderful. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Absolutely right. Again, here we have two PhDs, so it's going to be two. See my calculator, and then I will divide it by forty by four zero, and the answer is five percent. Four point zero five. Do it again. So it's going to be two. Divided for zero, and that's 0 0.05 or 5 percent. And this is the right answer. Thank you so much again. I appreciate that. To number 11. So in this question, we have data. We need to find the sample standard deviation. There's a formula for this you can find in the textbook, but we don't need to worry about the formula. This class is not about doing the calculations. This class is about making sense of the calculation. There are so many calculators that can help you to find the mean, the standard deviation, everything. So here we will use Excel. So I'm going to go back to this is the sheet, uh, it's called Week 1 Descriptive Statistic Calculator. This is available under course resources. You see what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go back. I delete the numbers here. Delete the numbers, you will see that everything is clear here. I will enter the numbers, 22, 5, negative 7. 
because I, I want you to know that you can use negative numbers, negative numbers, decimals, fractions, whatever you like. Seven. Now here also I would like you to note that 11 is repeated two times. So we still, we need to put it again. Even if the number is repeated, we still need to include it in the data set. Looking again, 22, 5, negative 7, 11, 2, 11. And then I'm going to click outside. Okay, now when you click outside, you will see that this is the standard deviation, which is 9.8. And here is the answer. What about number 11? I just have a note to tell you here. Now, look, if you take the standard deviation by itself, now in this case, this is the standard deviation 9.8, 9.8, 1558, by itself, or take it to the power 2. This will give me the variance. Will give me the variance. You see that standard deviation multiplied by itself will give you the variance. We we have uh, we have a comment from Vanessa for number eleven. Thank you, Vanessa. And now, oh, okay, great. I'm I'm excited to hear that. Thank you. Please feel free to ask questions. Can unmute yourself and uh, ask questions during this lecture. Excited to see more students enjoying the use of the Excel sheet. We have an Excel sheet every week. Next week also we'll have another sheet. Now we'll go to number twelve. Word of an observation in a set of normal distributed number, numerical data less than zero. It means that the observation is. Now, here I want to talk to you about the meaning of the z score. Now, the z score. Usually, this score will be for a number, like for x. Be the x, I put this in parentheses, minus the mean, divided by the standard deviation. This is the formula for the z score. And usually, you will find for a number, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it will be this number, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And also we can use the sheet, that the Excel sheet that we have. Professor? So, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Can you give us like an example with real numbers to use this? So much, yes, I will do that right now. That's a very good idea, I like Thank you. Thank so let's you. See. Yeah, so now we have an example. Let's say that, the mean is 10, the standard deviation, I will just write down uh, ST deviation because that's how you see it sometimes in the book, is 2. Now the question finds the, the z-score for number We have three numbers. The mean is given, the standard deviation is given, and then find the z score for number seven. So in this case, the x is seven. 
I'm going to put this in the formula. So you will have 7 minus 7 mean is 10. And divided by the standard deviation is 2. As you see, it's 7, 10, etc. And for us to get the answers, I'm going to copy this. With the equal sign. You know, when you have an equal sign in Excel, you do the math. If you don't have the equal sign like that, you will not get the answer. So you see, I need to go back here and then just put equal sign. So this gives me an answer of negative 1.5. So here, if the number is less than the mean, you will get a negative answer. Number is more than the mean, you get a positive answer. For example, right now for the same problem, find the z score is of the ten divided by the two. In order for us to give them the answer with equal sign like that. So as you see, when the seven is less than ten, less than the mean, we get a negative number. When the number twelve here is more than the mean, as you see in this case, we get a positive number. It's bigger than zero, it means it's going to be bigger than the mean. This is the formula for the z-score. So that's one example. But the other thing, why we need the z-score in the real life? Now, the answer for this is that we will study the normal distribution in week three. So the normal distribution uses the, uses the z-score. I do now, I want to just go to Google and just show you about the normal distribution. The normal distribution curve. The bell shaped curve that looks like that. Now Bit shaped curve that looks like that. The x axis is the z score. See that here, like the, the x axis is the, is the z score. So when you are zero, you are in the middle. When you go to one, an area here. Then you can go to two, you can go to three. So z score is one, it means that we are one standard deviation away from the mean. I'm going to go over this in just a few minutes, by the way. I'm going to go over this in a few minutes. Okay. In the, mean, in the meantime, any questions about this one that we, saw, we, we solved? Back to the homework. Is a good example about the Z-score? Yes, that makes sense. Thank you. Excellent. Let me know. Yeah, please, we, we have sufficient time today, so we will have discussions after we finish uh, the remaining questions, and then we can discuss topics. This will bring me to, uh, we, we have two more questions left. Uh, question 13 is about the rules for the standard deviation. So now I want to go back to the normal distribution that we discussed 
we have three rules here. 68 percent 5 percent 99.7 percent that we have three rules now what do they what do these rules mean please wait a few 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 a uh, few minutes i'm gonna talk in detail about what these rules mean if we go back to our example that we just discussed say that we will look at this example. The mean is still standard deviation 2 and the z score is 7. So I'm going to use the same numbers here. 10, 2 and 7. And I'm going to go back to the Excel sheet. Tell you that this calculator that we have here to the right can't find the z score for you. Again, I'm going to have 7 for, for x. The mean was 10, and the standard deviation was 2. So when you click here, you get negative 1.5. You get the answer here, as you, as you see. Here, the number 7 and 10, which is the mean, and then 2, two which is the standard deviation. That will give me the z score. So now I want you to know that you can use this calculator to find the z score, or you can do it by calculation. But I highly recommend that you use the z score calculator here to save time. Now, the three rules, the 68%, this means that if you are between negative 1 and 1 in the Z, in other words, if you are within standard, one standard deviation, you will have 68% of the numbers. If you are within 2, you will get 95%, and if you are within 3, standard deviations, you will get 99.7%. These are the three rules that we have. 68%, 95%, 99 99.7%. Example. That we have a normal distribution. normal or bell-shaped curve, sometimes you call it. The mean is 70, so I'm going to write down the mean is 70. Deviation is 10. They are asking, what is the proportion of the students who received between 60 and 80? mean we have the standard deviation find the percentage of the students who received between 60 and 80. now there are really many ways to solve this question the first one is you do this you take the mean 70 minus one standard deviation so minus one times s we can call it times s or same as 70 minus 1 times the standard deviation. Minus you can do the plus. Now, what is 70 minus 1 times 10? It's the same as 70 minus 10. So this will give me 60. So this means that we are within 
for standard deviation. Also, also you can do 70 plus. So now here is the minus, now we're gonna do the plus. This is 70. Times 10. You see the standard deviation is 10. The same as 70 plus 10. You see, now in the in the first part, we get 70 minus 10, that's 60. In the second part, we get 70 plus 10, that's 80. So, so based on this, we are within one standard deviation. So that will be 68%. If you were within two, yes, you would have two here, not one. So the answer for this one will, will be 68 percent. I know this question can be difficult. So questions about this one. Is that fine? I think that's pretty clear, Professor. This is my recommendation. Always take the mean minus one standard deviation. If you go to the lowest number here, that's it, will be one. If you, do, if you have to do two, that will be 95%. Let me give you an example about 95%. If you do here, now what is the standard deviation? 10, right? So if you do 70, Minus 2 times 10. And then if you do 70 plus 2 times 10. Now 2 times 10 is 20. 70 minus 20, that's 50. 2 plus 10 is 20. 50 plus 20, that's 90. So the question is asking between 50 and 90, that will be. 95% rule. And now we are at question 14. A question 14, they are asking, you have a normal distribution that's given. The mean is 25, so you see now what you can do, you can use this sheet here. The mean is 25, so I'm going to put 25 for the mean. The standard deviation is 3, so I'm going to put 3. They're asking the z-score for a number. As I mentioned before, they will not tell you just find the z-score. They will tell you find the z-score for number so and so, so or so. Yeah, z-score for 18. So you put the 18 here. The sheet as you see, and then click outside. You get the answer. Negative two point three three. The mean. We have the standard deviation. We have the number which is eighteen. So you can do this in Excel. So, for example, this is the formula for. Z score, we went over uh, this formula. We are solving the question for that. So if you put the X here, which is Twenty-five. In parentheses, I'm going to close it. Divide by the standard deviation, which is a three. Now you see, you will not get an answer. But if I copy this and then I put equal sign like that, you will get the same answer that we have from here. You can do it either in the calculator or by calculations here at least.
so now we have just completed the homework assignments for week one. So now I would like to give you the opportunity to ask me questions, discuss topics together with the online participants. Uh, we, we have about 11 minutes remaining. Questions, please feel free to ask. Any questions? Is it okay if you can introduce yourself right now? Just if you can, we have uh, four students. Introduce yourself. Let us know. Um, well, I'm Vanessa Mangro. Vanessa, uh, great. Hi, I'm actually um, doing business management. So this is very new for me. I'm, I'm speaking for myself. I don't know about anybody else in the class right now. Um, learning Excel, this is a challenge for me right now. So. I guess my question is, I guess once I practice a lot of the formulas, it will get easier for me. Okay. Because it was very, it was, I started the homework and it was a little challenging, um, but I got some of the formulas done today with your help here. So this is definitely going to help me. First, Vanessa, yes, you can join the lecture every uh, class. I made it 12 to 1 because I was, I, uh, I was hoping that Many of the students will be in their lunch time and they can join. And as you see, every time you see me using Excel, you can do it in the same way with me. And of course, if you are stuck in something, always let me know. Excel can be challenging, okay. especially, you know, they keep doing updates with Excel, keep changing. So always let me know. Right. Okay, I will. So is this how every week will be? Um, the homework will kind of help us a little bit. Absolutely. Every week I will be here okay. every Wednesday from 12 to 1. Okay, great. Of course, you have my email, my phone number and email are in the shell, in the announcements. Yes, I do. Feel free yes, to I email do. me at 20. Greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other students would like to introduce and talk about anything related to this class or ask questions? Yes, good morning, Professor. My name is Ashleen McNeely Sutton. Hi. Good morning. And I know I spoke with you before the recording started um, regarding the Excel spreadsheets. I do have a Mac and I do not use Windows. And so some of the applications and the processes for using um, these formulas don't really cross over to the Mac. Mm -hmm. And so for example, the spreadsheet uh, that I uploaded for this homework, uh, the variance and the standard deviation, those formulas did not cross over. And so I had to look up um, how to do the standard deviation um, separately. And so uh, I will occasionally have issues that way. So um, those of you who use Macs, uh, sorry, <laughs> there will be, um, we, we might have to kind of work around uh, find workarounds to to uh, do some of these formulas because it doesn't necessarily cross over to our computers. Well, thank you so much for bringing this to my attention. Um, I will uh, ask my colleagues and the students that I taught before who used Mac. Okay, um, there was another example for the um, within the, the homework that uh, video where the, the gentleman was demonstrating how to use the Excel. Um, one of the things that I was not able to do on mine was change the, the graph. Um, I can't remember the type of graph it was. I couldn't change it from the standard bar graph into the like ascending bar graph. I don't have that option unless I actually put the data in the order from largest to smallest. I can't do it. So I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. So that was just one of the little little quirks that that the Mac is giving me. So um, it's not a big deal. I can work around it, but just for future Mac users um, that you, they might come into that problem. I will get back to you hopefully in a few days with some information about that. I'm going to ask my colleagues about the Mac, but uh, do not worry about the other examples. Video regarding. Uh, a Mac. Uh, the important thing is how to make sure that you can use the sheet. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. 
Yeah, because many of the homework questions, quizzes, depend on the sheet. So did, did you figure out the balance and the time deviation, how you do it in the math? I did. I did. I, it, it took me a while um, to kind of work yeah. through it, but I was able to find the answers. That's outstanding. I appreciate that. That's wonderful. Yeah, well, again, thank you very much for this. I'm, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do some research and get back to you regarding the math, but that's really the, um, my recommendation to you always every week. Uh, do your best to make sure that you know how to use the Excel sheet in your uh, Mac. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. I know I had some students who, who um, with Mac before, I remember. At the class, I remember they asked me some differences. But then I remember there were some solutions. So that's why I'm trying to get in touch my students and my colleagues and get back to you about fixing the Excel math issues, hopefully in a few days. It's, uh, from the other participants. What the quiz, anybody took the quiz? I did not attempt it yet, Professor, but I just, once I got a grasp of the homework, I'm going to start it probably tomorrow. You, yes, so of course. Now we have till Sunday at midnight to do it. Good that you study the homework very well and then have to take it. I, yes, I yeah. want to get a good grab on the homework first. I, I completely agree with you. That's a great idea. Okay. Professor, I did have one more question. I noticed in your announcement uh, for this week that you said uh, if individuals are able to participate and or listen to the recording of your lecture uh, six out of eight times that they would receive 100%. Yes, ex exactly right there on the part A of the course project. I have not really read over the course project uh, thoroughly, uh, very thoroughly yet. Is there any way you can um, maybe briefly describe what we need to do for that and, and how is that 100% um, going to be, how is that going to work out? Absolutely. So the course project, uh, here you will have data and there will be three parts for the course project. So there will be part A, B, and also the final exam. I want to show you the uh, course project overview here. So you see we have part A, it's about description and statistics. And part B, and also part C, or the final project, or the final exam. So in this project, you will have that will have data, sales data, calls, time, years, and type, and the data will be posted under files. It will be posted by the end of this week, or maybe early in next week. So for students who attend six sessions, like like uh, all of you today here. Uh, you will get 100% in this part, and you don't have to do it. This way you will focus more on parts B and uh, final project. That are due later in the session. Part B is due in week five. And final project is due in uh, week eight. So now for part A, you will have data, sales, calls, times, and years. And then you will with the data. I'm, I'm going to share right now on the screen example about the data. For example, you would have data like that. She sales, calls, times, and years, and you will need to do the mean, median, standard deviation, variance, range, and to do some graphs with the data. So this would be in part A. Now, um, the details of the course project are explained under part A. Uh, now I went to the modules and then I went to course project overview and that includes the instructions for the project. So for those of you who plan to attend, uh, now I said six, but even if you attend five, you know, we can make it five. Even if you attend five sessions online like that, 
No, you don't have to worry about uh, this part, part A. Data will be posted Monday, but by Monday next week for sure. But again, this is an example about the data that will be posted. So you will have columns of numbers like sales, calls, times, and years, and then you will discuss some questions regarding this data point. Questions about the projects? Thank you, Professor. If you plan to attend like four more, you know, what, what you can use your energy to focus more on other aspects of the course, such as the homework, the quizzes, uh, ex to learn more about the Excel sheet. We will get a chance to work on the parts B and C uh, during the, this live lecture. Just leave it, leave it like this for you. Um, when, when week five comes, we'll discuss how to do part B. And later, in week seven, we will discuss how to do the final project. But we still, if, if you have any questions, any comments, or any ideas that you want to share or ask, please go ahead. Now, before I go, may I ask where are uh, you located, uh, everyone here? For me, I am in the Edison area. I am in Tampa, Florida. How, how is the weather over there? <laughs> how is the weather? I'm sorry? In Florida. In Tampa. How is the weather? We had the snow in Chicago today. Oh, really? Well, it's really beautiful here. We get like, it's hot. <laughs> it's very, yes, it's very sunny and hot. That's great. Yeah. I am located in Seattle, Washington, and it is beautifully overcast today. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we like the rain up here. <laughs> rainy today there? Is it rainy? Yes, it will be this afternoon. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm not going to complain. I love the weather here in Florida. <laughs> You, we had uh, this is to, today we had our first snow in Chicago. Yeah, I saw that on on the news. I saw y'all had um snow. I was like, wow, it's only fall, so kind of you know. Oh, that's global warming for you. <laughs> but thank you very much, Professor. This was very interesting. Welcome. Uh, I will see you. On Monday, but next week. But again, yeah. feel free to email me, everybody. I'm very good with emails, very good with phone numbers, with fo with phone calls. Okay. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me, please. Okay, thank you very much. Y'all have a good one. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. Bye bye. 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 Sorry, Ma Maria. I just saw uh, you are in California. Oh, your mic is not working. I'm sorry for that. I just uh, saw your message. So welcome, Maria. Welcome to be in California. The weather must be very nice over there. Everybody will have a great, great day. And thank you so much again for joining us today. See you on Monday. And again, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Bye-bye now.